And we're back with some more Spaced Out DLC today. Uh, back in Oxygen Not Included, and today we are starting with a bit of a downer. Uh, the downer being, well, I found Felix here, Fix-It Felix, it dead in the compost heaps. This happened at the end of last episode, though I didn't notice the duplicate had died message had come up, but I didn't get any warnings or anything. I know some people did get injured when we were taking care of this down here, but one of them, one of the, only one of them was incapacitated. I got a warning and I carried them back to the triage cots and they were fine. But Fix-It Felix never gave me anything. They just suddenly showed up dead. I have no idea how that happened. Not a clue. Uh, kind of a downer, but we'll get him a tasteful memorial, a hanging pot, and we'll leave them over there. In the meantime, we have got to get on with it. The plan today is to become fully self-sustainable in this asteroid. That means we're going to harness this polluted water vent. Then we're also going to, or polluted slush geyser, then we're also going to harness this cool slush geyser. We're going to store both the outputs from them. One of them will hook up to oxygen, one of them will hook up to crops, and that should provide us with all our food and oxygen needs for this asteroid for the foreseeable future. This is taking a little bit of time to get done, but we're close to getting there. We're going to stick a wall down here, maybe wall that in. I don't know what I'm going to do with this water. I might just make it part of that whole tank, but no. Uh, first up, new printables are available. I'm looking for a replacement. Someone who's expendable. Someone who's good at construction and excav and digging, which just so happens to be fit the bill. So, uh, who shall we call you? Well, we are going to send them through the teleporter once they've got a couple of skill points under their belt. So how about Pawn Sacrifice? Yes, that sounds... Totally appropriate. Actually, no, let, let's just shorten that to Pawn. Yeah, we'll call you Pawn. Pawn, you will hopefully survive when you reach the other side. Uh, one thing I've skipped out on is the moment we clicked on this, well, when I clicked on that earlier, it brought up this star map thing, which allows us to see this other asteroid. Now, I've tried looking at it. You can't actually see anything on the asteroid, but I'm pretty sure if we enter the asteroid, as in if we go, where was it? If we go into this teleporter and send someone there, they'll end up on that planet. I don't know if they'll live or not, but I'm willing to take that risk. It should at least be entertaining. I can't imagine they're going to have them die instantly, but I can also imagine them making it very awkward to survive. So let's just make sure we send someone who can build and dig just in case they need to build or dig their way out of there. They might have to dig their way to uh, an exit teleporter, or they might have to build something to get to the teleporter, like ladders or things like that, or God knows what. So let's just make sure they've got a few skill points under their belt before we send them over. Well, hey, we've got Cool Slush Geyser contained, we've got Cool Salt Slush Geyser also contained. I've stuck in preemptively a couple of pumps here. Uh, wait, is that already hooked up to the power lines? I didn't hook that up, I thought, but uh, this one's already hooked up to the power lines. This one is not, and this one is not. The reason I've left uh, these two here is just so that I can pump them out later, and this one here is just a mixed pool. I was going to actually extend this pool all the way down, but I think, no, I'll just uh, filter that and dump some of it back in there after we sort our electricity needs which will be after we sort out this coal biome. We want to sort of put in a wall here and let this entire ice biome melt down here. We don't really care about that anti-entropy nullifier, considering we've got two icy geysers here we can use for whatever we want. I think our cooling needs are well sorted for a long time to come. Well, we're doing a, a quick cleanup job here. We've got another duplicate to choose from, and we've got another one that looks pretty good, construction and machinery. Well, we've already 11 dupes, but... I kind of want to go 12, why not? This one, it will actually work as a good mechatronics engineer. That way, if we need to send someone through afterwards to, to the portal afterwards to help out the pawn, maybe, you know, assuming it's safe, they'd be pretty handy to have around. Say hello to Dunn and Dusted. They'll only go through once the other person's made sure it's safe. Seems perfectly legit. That is our prep work done for, well, just containing all the natural resources we've got access to. I'll have to do a little bit of filtration to get at some of the bits and bobs, but for now, we want to concentrate on power. Uh, the reason being, these plug slugs are not nearly as good as I was hoping. Damn it, they've just come off a uh, cooldown. Yeah, these ones are only producing 40 watts of power now, as opposed to the 400 they were producing before, and I think it's because they're hungry. This one over here was fine there a while ago, and it's happy and wild and idle. The reason being, I think it's getting, yeah, it's eating some of the cobalt ore around here, and that's keeping it happy, which is why it's producing more watts. I have no intention of feeding them, so we're going to have to find power from some alternative sources. Now, a good suggestion was solar. Turns out there's no meteors here. I've been watching this for ages and nothing's come down. I think we break out the top. Now, to break out the top, we're going to need to get our hands on some oxygen out there. Now, where was these stations? There's a new station here, the oxygen mask station. Uh, you use metal ores, you create oxygen masks. It's sort of like a, a poor man's atmo suit, as in it doesn't actually protect you, but it does provide you with oxygen. So what we can do is stick one up here, break out, and we should be able to build solar up there. So we need to get our hands on some glass. 
we can make some glass and we can also deconstruct some of these. There's a whole bunch of glass tied up in these that we can turn into more solar panels. And we can probably smel yeah, we can smelt up some sand if we really need to. It'll be expensive, but it can be done. Once we know how much glass this gets us, we'll know how much solar we're going to need. At the same time, we're going to want to put in some oxygen production up here. Yeah, probably to feed whatever this machine is. Actually, let's see where we're going to put it. I think we're going to stick it here. And then we'll have to have a liquid lock or something in place to prevent the oxygen from escaping. We've got a functional airlock that'll stop any of the gases escaping. Now I just never put in the actual... Yeah, I never put in the masks, did I? I uh, will have to put in the masks somewhere. Let me think. I'm going to have to rejig this just a little bit. Maybe go out here and then up. Simple plan. We throw in the oxygen mask station here and then we block this off. They'll have to run through here, up here and across. Slightly roundabout method of doing it, but, you know, that's what you get for planning badly. Uh, we'll remove that out of the way, get rid of these, and we're going to want to... From what I can see, it sucks in ambient oxygen, so... We should probably put down an oxygen source nearby. I'm thinking one of our good old-fashioned uh, sublimation stations because that's pretty much all we have for oxygen production right now. And let's just make sure this is fully covered. This time I bother to work out the numbers. The sublimation station produces 660 grams of oxygen per second. Each one of these deodorizers can handle 100 grams of polluted oxygen per second, which means you need seven of them to take care of one fully operational sublimation station. That's a lot. That's, like, an awful, awful lot. I'm not even putting nearly that many down here, usually about four. Hmm, but it's still, even four we tend to take care of all the polluted oxygen eventually. Eh, we will finish this off and then we're going to run the power wire down. I don't want to hook this up until we're good to go. Oh, actually, never mind, the power wire was very close. Alright, we've got everything sorted, power hooked up. I realized I had to put in an auto sweeper over here to make sure I could feed some of these sand, otherwise it wouldn't work. Uh, Alright, we're also going to need the sublimation station filled up, but once that starts... Oh, that's already starting to fill up. Okay, how much oxygen are you consuming? Uh, not that much, it seems. How much do you hold up to? Okay, actually, oh, well, actually that is a fair bit. And how's their food poisoning germs in there? Oh yeah, we're using polluted dirt that probably has a bit of germs in it. Ah, whatever. Okay, I think that's actually working. Okay, all the polluted oxygen is immediately getting converted. Though we're definitely sucking in the oxygen faster than we're producing it. You can see that hydrogen cloud is coming down. That's... Hmm... No, nope, it'll be grand. It'll be grand. Once this is filled up, we can start sending duplicates out to space. And then we can see about getting solar up there. Are they going to be up? I'm just curious how they're going to survive in the vacuum of space, you know, what with it being a vacuum and stuff, and it tries to suck out your eyeballs and things. But we'll worry about that when you arrive. All right. How you do it? You've got a... That looks like someone jerry-rigged some sort of scuba device. Let me have a look here. What have you got on you, yes? <laughs> oh my god. It looks like someone got a snorkel and just attached it to, I presume, is a tank of oxygen. That, yeah, I'm not sure that that's how reality works, but you know what? It's duplicate, so let's go with it. All right, once you're up there, we're going to see how high it goes. We'll go all the way to the top, and then we'll figure out where we're going to place our solar. This is a very odd system. It's hard to see here because everything's in the way, but there's a there seems to be a pile of oxygen masks right there. At first, I thought they were just putting way too many down, and then it turns out they sort of pick them up off the ground sometimes, and sometimes they don't, but it seems to never really go above five, though we'll find out here in a minute, the next time someone goes past. Oh, did you? Oh, Max Diggity didn't even get a mask this time. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. I'm not sure exactly how it's working. But occasionally they pick up masks, occasionally they don't. Uh, well, we're going to keep going out. We're going to see where space is, where the, the top of space is. Yeah, the oxygen consumption here is just a little bit too high. We're going to need to invest in another sublimation station, I'm thinking. I've set this to priority six, though, so they'll prioritize that. When they're not busy doing that, they'll they'll do it down here. I don't think we're going to have too many duplicates up here anyway. We have finally found the top of the map. It's quite high up. But I don't think we really need to go that high. We just want to get some solar out there into the light. So I think that is actually fine. There's plenty of light out here to take advantage of, so let's just throw in a few solar panels. There we go, we'll throw in three of them across there just to start. We're going to want a power cable to go through them all. It feels weird not using heavy watt wire, but we don't really need... We don't have, really have a high capacity grid. At the moment we're only pulling well, a small amount of watts. If we put solar in here combined with our battery backup down below, we should be able to just run on solar for eternity. I'm also finally getting starting to get the hang of these things. 
from what I can tell, these things soak up oxygen from the surrounding environment. And once they reach, well, once they reach a certain level, duplicants can run by and pick up some masks. However, where are you going? Don't go back up. Don't go back up. You're, you're going back up, aren't you? You know what? Why don't you just pop over there for one second? Yeah, that's better. Now, when they go past, they should actually pick up a decent mask. However, the more full the mask is when they go by, the more oxygen they get in it, the longer they can stay out there. So this one here is going to pick up a mask. And if we check them there, that's how much oxygen they've got left. 26 out of 100. However, the next person here is probably not going to get nearly so much. And they got... Okay, they got exactly the same, is it? Yeah, 26 out of 100. I wonder if there's a bonus for using different metals. Uh... Look, if we use a different metal to make this, does it make a difference? Why are we only getting 26 out of 100 when the tanks seem to be full? You know what? No idea why it's happening. Not a clue. We'll just have to leave them as is. I'm going to let them finish off this solar. Once that's done, we should be pretty sustainable. We might want to put down... Where is it? Oh, I forgot. Blueprint. None of these really appeal to me. We, we don't need a doctor. Plus five piloting and strength. Nah, that's a bad... We, we don't need that combo. This is actually a great combo. Machinery, construction, and science. Unfortunately, they're biohazardous, undigging, shabby dresser. The, the undigging just... Nope. No, thank you. We'll, we'll take the algae. But, um... Oh, that was another thing. Fish. We're looking at these ones here. The di diet on these has been expanded a lot. It used to be just algae. Now it's seeds. They eat all the seeds. There's bog bucket... Bam Lily, Tranquil Toad, Buddy Bud, Joyous Seed. So the way you end up with hundreds and hundreds of seeds and oh, I have to reload the game. They're all piled up on spots. I, I think they've all bugged out. They're all crammed on top of each other. But um, yeah, I think this is for seed disposal at the end of the game. You can feed them to your Paku. I actually like that idea. That's wonderful. Uh, over here, all of our plants. I've actually had to cut down our plants. We're, we're generating too many calories. We're up to what? 25,000 calories? Well, oh wait, no, that's a... That's wrong. 259,000 calories. Quarter of a million calories in there. Oops. Yeah, um, yeah, get this finished and maybe once our batteries are fully charged or just we might just go along and just churn some more sand into solar panels. I think about three to six of these should be fine, depending. Another thing to note is that the masks do wear out and you're sort of destroying minerals doing this, so I don't really like it. I should be more careful with this. Every time one of these masks just disappears because once the oxygen runs out, you'll see it here on Max Diggity. They've got the mask, they've got the mask, what's they're up to? They've got zero oxygen left and boom, suddenly the mask disappears. You don't seem to get any metal back. It just... That's it. You're done. You, you lose all of the resources that went into making the mask. And how much is it? I think it's about 30 kilos or something along those lines. It's not super cheap so maybe let's not do that all the time so once we finish this we're going to maybe stay out of space for a bit anyway while that's going on we are going to put in some glass refinement down here i'm thinking we just dump it into the ice biome we, we don't really care about the ice biome anyway so yeah we'll just stick in a quick one right here and get enough to produce another another couple of solar panels wait 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 before i can even start on that a uh, minor problem has reared its head this uh, tank is sort of overflowing just a little bit this tank has been consistently being filled by this sludge press, which is slowly but surely converting all the mud to dirt and water. It's a slow process and we got 21 tons left to go and the, I believe, giant salad spinner was how people described it, which, yeah, now that, I, now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. That is a giant salad spinner. I, I get it now. It's a wonderful centrifuge. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll let that keep going now and we'll get back to, yes, that was it, glass. We might as well move our battery bank in here while we're at it. It's nice and chilly in here. And over here is getting a little bit warm. Not uncomfortably warm, but enough warm that, you know what, now that we've got the solar up and running, we might as well. Also, I've realized I don't think we need the glass. We've actually got enough glass from everything we deconstructed to build three more of these suckers. And why is that an unreachable build? Oh, I get it now. They can't get past this oxygen mask station if there is no cobalt ore in it. So there was no ore in the mask station, so no one was allowed past. That's why it was an unreachable build, but we fixed that. Yeah, we'll let them finish that off, and oh, let's see what new do. If we didn't already have a few dogs buddies, this one is actually really good. Farming, cooking, and supplying. But no, thank you, we'll take this instead. These ones just... No, husbandry and strength don't go together, and neither creativity and piloting. You either want all husbandry because that skill is bugged and won't improve anymore, or you'd want all piloting. As far as I'm aware, you can't improve piloting yet either. In fact, I can't even find piloting listed as a skill belonging to a dupe just yet. Uh, it seems they don't list it. For example, if you click on this one here, there's no piloting skill does not appear to be listed in the attribute section just yet. No idea why that is. It, I presume they're going to patch that patch that in the future, though. Oh, as well as that, we've got this 
unknown down here. It seems to be shadowed out. I think this was meant to be an exploratory area or something, but we're just going to dump a bunch of hot glass on top of it and hopefully that'll get rid of the problem. I don't really want to just deconstruct these batteries, so instead we're going to hook them up with a transformer. What we're going to do here is take all the power from here and dump it across this direction. Now that should, wow, it rapidly charged those batteries. It'll basically dump all of its power outwards and won't accept any power back. So eventually these will discharge after slowly dumping their power onto the grid. I mean, I don't think we really need it considering we've now got six solar panels up and running, generating a whopping 380 watts apiece each at peak output. Yeah, we're we're pretty much covered on the power front, which means, well, a little bit more demolition. I should probably demolish the whole map, but I kind of want to move on and see what the next planet has to offer. So I think what we'll do is we'll throw in a quick oxygen production facility and, oh wait, cooling as well. We want to switch these over to bog buckets. Hmm, let me think for a minute. To make this work and to convert our farms over completely, we're going to need, well, we're going to need to heat up this water that's coming out of here. This polluted water is way too cold. If we try to feed this into a bog bucket, one of these bog bucket seeds, they can only survive at temperatures as low as 10C. So we need to heat this up to above 10C. That means it needs to gain 20 degrees in temperature. Well, the simplest way to do that is a tepidizer. This thing right here. Only problem is it takes 960 watts. Now, we don't need to heat up huge amounts of water, so... It, it won't be a massive drain on our power grid. The problem is the spikes will probably cause us to get burnouts on some of the wires. We may need to go for the system to deal with that. Ugh, damn it. And we're also going to have the problem of convert heating this up as well. We can't convert that straight to water, otherwise it will crack in the pipes. So, let me think for a minute here. I think first thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of demolition in the background. Demolition always uh, eases my mind, so to speak. And once... We've done a little bit of that. I'm also uh, cranking out some more glass. The reason being, I want to have the option to produce more power if we need it. That'll allow us to throw down two more solar panels. And yes, that has been activated for a while, hasn't it? Ooh, Ashcan over there is actually not looking too bad. Science, construction, and athletics. Uh, if we go into skills here and say grab someone, uh, science would mean we'd get advanced research. Construction, we don't really care about. And athletics gives suit wearing, as far as I'm aware. So, hmm. See, I've been looking at this rocket piloting. If you want to get a rocket pilot Mark II, you need someone who's good at advanced research, astronomy, rocket piloting, and rocket piloting Mark II. However, you kind of want them to be able to wear an exosuit while they're doing that, which requires you to grab all these three skills as well. That's a lot of skill points you're going to need for those. Like, you're going to need to take this entire th tree here and go all the way to the end of it. And that's assuming you just want them to pilot a rocket and not get out at the other end and build a base. Hmm. But no, no, we don't want to... Uh, we don't want Ashcan just yet. I think we'll wait until a little bit later until we know exactly what we're dealing with before we start committing to that. Uh, for the time being, let me just do a little bit of quick demolition here. I want to see what we're working with. The plan is very simple. We're going to demolish most of these caustic biomes. We're going to have to find a way to deal with the chlorine, but that's grand, but it will give us access to a whole lot of coal. We will use the coal exclusively. Well, we'll have it as a backup power as well, but we're going to use the coal almost exclusively to run the tepidizers to heat up the water to make sure that our crops stay going. We... We've only got 20 tons of coal at the moment, so I want to see how much coal we've got on this map before I commit to burning. Well, not a lot of it, but we will be committing to a non-renewable resource for this. But it should keep us going for literally hundreds of cycles, assuming we don't abuse it. We have just mined our first piece of bleached stone over here. And due to that, we have decided to set up a storage container down here in the water. In fact, you know what? Let's put down a few water storage containers here. We will set all these to store bleach stone, highest priority. We don't be releasing too much bleach into the environment just yet. Namely because I don't think we have a way of dealing with it. We'll have to stick it in gas tanks, which I'd rather not do. Um, that's also going to let out some of the hydrogen, but I suppose we can always turn that into energy. We're going to have to demolish these slime biomes, and it's kind of annoying because, well, the hydrogen and chlorine will contaminate the place just a little bit. But I think we'll be good. One thing I'm interested about is these carpet tiles down here. Now, normally... Carpet tiles are made using reed fiber. When we deconstruct these carpet tiles from the wild, do they actually drop any reed fiber is the question. I don't think they do. I think when you deconstruct them, the reed fiber is lost, and yes, that would appear to be the case. Pity, but eh, worth checking out. There is nothing quite like the sight of a freshly shorn asteroid, where you've just scraped out just about everything. Well, we haven't got in here because we've managed to scrape out enough coal. 25 tons, I'm quite happy with that amount, actually. We've got even a little bit more in here we can dig out, also some iron ore that would be nice for our power grid, and a little bit more over this side. So I think we'll uh, excavate this out as well, and by then we should have more than enough to move on.
While trying to dig out down here, we got a few scaldings along the way, and finally at some point my brain kicked into gear and went, wait a minute, why don't we use that scalding heat to preheat our polluted water a little bit? At the same time, we can cool down this area and gain access to more of its resources. That just seems like a sane idea. However, first I think we'll get rid of this carbon dioxide pool. This is going to cause us issues if we don't dispose of it now. I think we'll actually start rotating a bit of chill water through here to start, just to prevent the area from overheating. All we're going to do is uh, run a, a closed loop down here, through this area, and we can hopefully start dragging the temperature down, while simultaneously increasing the temperature in here. So I may have went a little bit overboard on the cooling loop, but you know, we're, we're trying to get rid of an awful lot of heat at, or chill out of this polluted water, and we might as well find a use for it. Okay, this brine, I think we'll pump the brine into it because, well, it's available, it's cheap, it's easy, and it's on standby, and we have no other use for that tank. Might as well dump it into something. So, yeah, let's feed that on down here. Also, at the same time, we're going to have this liquid shut off here. And we're going to put on a quick automation switch. Uh, the reason being, just so we can turn it off when we want. We don't want to dump too much chill in here. We'll probably put in an automation sensor to make sure this doesn't go above a certain temperature. But just to start it up, we'll have a look. Oh, where was I? Ah, yes. Uh, this. This needs to be run down here. This pipe from over there. And that will dump the liquid onto it. Now, we're going to need one other thing, and that is power. Which, fortunately, is close by. We'll just run that to there, and we can connect at the last meter when the time comes. All right, let's uh, let's get this finished. I think we're just about good to start it. I believe all we have left to do is hook up this conductive wire. That should start the pump moving. That'll get the brine moving through here. Now, we're not too worried about the brine ever sta standing still in here. There's nothing above 100 degrees unless you start actually touching the abyss light itself. So as long as we don't let the... So as long as we don't start touching the abyss light, I think we'll be fine on any temperature and overheating. There we go. Now all we have to do is let that run for a while, and it should hopefully start dragging in the temperature in the whole area. But, while that's going on, we need to get a few other things installed. Uh, oh yeah, the water is going to rotate all the way around, all the way through here, and then when it comes back it's going to rotate through the bottom of the tank again. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put a sensor on the pipe. We will just use a regular thermal sensor. Uh, we're going to make it if the temperature in here is, say, higher than 15 degrees, this will shut off that liquid shut off. And that will stop the cooling loop from running. And that will stop us draining any more heat out of this environment and dumping any more heat in here. Which should mean we end up with water exactly what temperature we want it to. Well, until we drain most of the heat out of this biome or we've demolished it all. One way or the other. Now, maybe let's just have a, a quick look at the temperature overlay and we'll come back to that in a bit. And there we have a complete rotation done by all the liquid. You can see it comes down here. It's, it's really cold when it starts out. It's minus 10 or something like that. And then after it's rotated through, done a full loop all the around, you can see it's getting warmer and warmer as it goes. And then by the time it comes back and it's just about ready to return to the tank, it's up to 30 C. So it dropped, what, about, well, it gained about 40 degrees in temperature going around down here. Perfectly reasonable. And then it's going to pop back through here and dump off a bunch and pick up a bunch of chill out of this tank. In which case it just keeps rotating out. And we can now disconnect this. This is... Way too excessive. I, oh, someone's trapped. How the hell did you manage... Okay, sedimentary rock. That was my mistake. I am sorry. We'll make that out of igneous. You guys should be able to fix that in no time. Oh god, these are all sedimentary rock. One moment. It's the little things that'll get you killed. Eh, with that done, we've... I've also been stripping out a little bit more of the map in the background. Because, you know, we, we can't have the dupe standing idly by when there's biomes to be demolished. The only thing we haven't demolished is this over here. The rest, though, is mostly caustic biomes that I'm not going to touch, or bits that are just a little bit awkward and out of the way. I think... I think that's good enough. What we're going to start doing now is... What's the water temperature like in there? Eh, it'll slowly drag up. I think uh, we're going to use this as our sort of our temperature modulator tank. As in, we'll put in a tepidizer right here. We'll set it to keep this part of the water at 15 degrees, and we'll run our polluted water from down here through that area, like just in a pipe through it so that it, uh, it stabilizes at about 15C before getting sent up here into our, what's going to be our crops. Which means we should probably, you know what, we'll redo our crops after we get this set up. And we're also going to want to install another power generator. Oh, wait, before we install the power generator, probably should get rid of all this nasty CO2 down here first. This should be fairly straightforward. We're just going to have a closed carbon skimmer. So we'll have a carbon skimmer here. The polluted water from the carbon skimmer will get spit out, put into a water safe, turn into clean water, put back into the carbon skimmer. And around and around it goes. Uh, the reason I've got this over here, this bottle emptier, is I'm going to put in some clean water there. Namely because I sort of boxed myself in with pipes and I don't really see a way of running clean water from somewhere else. So we'll just pump it in from a local source. Should be fine. A little bit of water gets dumped into the system and now it's running. So, 
water comes across here, goes into the carbon skimmer, carbon skimmer soaks up the carbon dioxide, spits out some polluted water, polluted water goes through the sieve, right back into clean again. And this will produce us some polluted dirt, and people got to come down and put sand in it occasionally, but it will clean up all those nasty gases at the bottom of the map. Well, not the polluted oxygen, but it will take care of the carbon dioxide. So, problem solved. Now, our duplicates are idle, so we should probably get around to something. You notice here the temperature is slowly going down over here, but not by much, but it is far more livable. We'll let that keep running for a while and see how it goes. Though, what's it look like now? Hmm, 11 degrees. That's a hell of a change. We're dumping an awful lot of chill into this area, or absorbing a lot of heat, whatever way you want to look at it. And long term, I think that will work out for us. But now, yes, uh, yes, we're going to put in car power supply here, liquid tepidizer here and pump the water up that way. Power supply installed, just a couple of power cables to go in. Oh, better set that battery so it doesn't do something stupid. Say 9060 is good for us. The only thing this is hooked up to is that tepidizer. And that tepidizer is only hooked up to this thermal sensor and it says if the temperature is below 15 degrees, crank up. That just, we want to make sure that uh, the water coming out of here is going to be above 10 degrees. Now, oh, down here, we're going to have to do some filtration on this. And the reason being there's some salt water that got in there during the construction project. So we will have to filter it, at least to start. I don't think that stuff over there is going to bother us. And are you dormant yet? Oh, damn it, that went dormant. Next activity, 37.3 cycles. Well, that's just perfect. Next activity, 35.8. Let me work out the numbers on this one. This cool slush geyser produces about only 1.5 kilos of water per second. That's actually lower than I was ex expecting. I thought these things were usually about two and a half or something, but nope, nope. That means it produces about 918 kilos a cycle. And a bog bucket requires, what is it, 40 kilos per cycle? Yeah, so we're going to be able to support about 22 bog buckets? Hmm. Indeed. But I figure with grub fruit plants to increase growth speed, or grub grub, grub grubs, given grub grub grubs, they should grow an awful lot faster. However, to keep the grub grub, Keep the grubs. I'm just going to call them grubs. I'm not going to call them grub grubs, just grubs. To keep the grubs reproducing and producing uh, grub eggs, they need to tend to grub fruit plants. That keeps upping their chances. Otherwise, these will all eventually revert back to sweetles. And if we say grab a random sweetle around here that hasn't had a chance to, you know, uh, tend to one of these, you'll notice that its sweetle egg chads is 98%. In other words, these things 98% of the time will turn into another one of them. However, if they tend to a spindle fruit or a grub fruit or something like that, they then increase their chances every time of laying a sweet uh, a grub egg. So we're going to need to mix in a f at least a few or leave a few grub plants in just so that the uh, these sweetles will keep turning into grubs, and those grubs can keep tending to our bug bu bug buckets and increasing their production reproduction speed. So we can put in twenty two, but we're going to have to put in farming tiles. One moment, yeah, I think I don't want those to escape. That will give us all our bog buckets, and we'll stick in a few spindle thingies back here, just to make sure that the reproduction rates stay up. Uh, you know what? Let's just fill it all in. If this works, we can get rid of those top line up there. If we notice a dip in the calories, we'll worry about it. Now, the water is going to come from all the way down here. And we're going to pump the polluted water out of there. It goes through here, up through there, and then it's going to zigzag past this uh, tepidizer. And it should be above 10 degrees at least by the time it gets out of there. That's the plan. If it's not coming out above 10 degrees, we'll just keep jack jacking up the pressure on the tepidizer until it is definitely coming out at 10 degrees. Okay. That's it. Let's skip this forward a little bit. Oh, minor mistake. I forgot to put in the uh, the liquid filter, so we got to make sure we filter out that salt water. There's a little blob of it there, but once that's gone, we can uh, disconnect the liquid filter. It is going to soak up a little bit of power for a while, but we've got enough of that for now. But here comes the water. Oh, still minus 10. This tank is not heating up too quickly. Okay, it's gone down a whole degree. Or gone up a few degrees. It's just uh, most of the heating is ending up this side to start. It's just the way the cooling loop is running. How's that cooling loop looking? 18 degrees. The amount of heat we're sucking out of there is kind of amazing. But uh, I did a little bit of an experiment over here with a metal tile. That should uh, help dump heat ch uh, chill in here faster. And it definitely does work. But I'm just not bothered replicating that. We have plenty of time anyway. Once this is up and running, we'll have more than enough time. Okay, there we go. Uh, is all the salt water gone? No, nope, no, nope, we've still got bunches of salt water. Come on, how much of you is left? There can't be that much. 141 kilos. Okay, once the salt water is gone, this will flow much cleaner. And we want to see if these, uh, if the grubs give uh, their grub rubs to these things. They don't seem to be going near them just yet, but we're going to do a quick sweep here. I'm going to put our 
bulk storage up here because at this point we need to start sweeping some places. The place is absolutely filthy. Also, I want to try throwing in a few statues, which reminds me we should throw some of them down right now. I want to see if any of the statues have changed or if there's any new ones. I mean, okay, it's wishful thinking, but we can we can always hope, can't we? Uh, with that swept up, we should be at least getting get a better idea if any of these bug bu buckets are getting... Ooh, sweetling tended. Okay, the sweetle will tend them and it gives a 5% growth boost. That's not nearly as good as a grub grub. A grub rub. Um, but I don't see the grub rubs actually kicking in there on these ones. Maybe they prefer... Maybe they prefer the other ones, what you might call it, the, uh, ah, the good fruit plant. We'll find out in a minute. I think I'm going to move all of those down there, as, down here as well. And we're going to see how that works out. It works. The grub rub will, the grub will rub down a, a bug bucket. So that was going to increase its growth rate by 100% for one cycle. Now, these seem to be acting an awful lot slower than before. I think it's because I'm not feeding them. Ah. Uh. I think I can be okay with that. So long as they do manage to tend at least some of them, we will be fine. I've thrown three of them down here. And our calories should... Well, I'll keep an eye on our calories and see how they work out. As for the actual polluted water itself, it's coming out at the 20 degree mark. Yeah, it heats up the whole way. So we're getting the water out at the correct temperature. That is perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. And down here, I think we're also golden. The temperature down here will slowly start to drag down and we can mine into it more. I mean... You can see there's 20 degrees in places, 30, 40. It gets a bit warm over here by the edges, but slowly but surely we're going to eat that out as well. We've, we're cooling down this biome without a steam turbine. It's kind of fun. I've never really bothered using these. Once I got access to steam turbines, I'd never use these for cooling. I kind of like what they've done here. They've... Actually, no, no, no. We need to get into the tr tr transporter. It's time for us to see what's on the other side. Eh, who are we going to send again? Wait, wait, no. Before we send Pawn on their way, I realize we have to get the toilets done. That's the last thing. Once that's done, we're at, We're going to, well, see what's on the other side. After all of this waiting to get to the other side, I, I'm going to kind of be disappointed if it's not something epic. Now, uh, one moment. And there we go. Water sieve up and running. So we've just hooked up two toilets so far. They should all be sorted now. Oh, this is going to be the overflow. And of course, I didn't put a ladder up to it. All right. Very simple system. Polluted water from the toilets gets spit out, goes into the water sieve, gets cleaned, dumped back into the toilets. What the... How did that happen? Why is that back flowing? Oh, I need to put a one-way directional bridge on this, don't I? Uh, yeah, that would be why. I keep hitting F recently, probably due to some other game I'm playing that's messing with my, uh, my ability to do this now. That should go, like, there, and that will stop that water from doing that. That's going to be rather annoying because it will clog up the system. Come on, dupes. Okay, that should force all the water that direction. There we go. Took a little bit of fiddling, but now this is the priority flow. Any polluted water coming from here will be prioritized over water coming from down here. So that means any excess toilet water we produce will get sent over here, dumped straight into our bog bucket, bog bucket plants, and out of our, well, and stop this all from backing up. Now what we can do is replace all these toilets with actual plumbed ones. Unfortunately, Pawn has managed to pick up food poisoning, so that's, uh, that's, we don't want to send him through sick. That would be, well, just slightly even cruel and unusual, even for me. All right, we'll go with a, a sweep only, allow manual use, and what we are going to do is we are going to sweep up a bunch of bleachstone in here. Uh, the reason being, some of these have managed to acquire some germs onto them. I don't know how. Okay, yeah, I do, but uh, it doesn't really make a difference. What we'll do here is we will reduce these to one, and then what will happen is a Pawn will come along, they'll pick up, actually, where is it? Pawn should come along, pick up the bleach stone, and sweep it into this. That will get dumped into our little uh, vacuum storage area, and then once it's in there, it will release its chlorine. The chlorine will kill all the germs, and that will be the end of it. Here comes Max now. Bleach stone goes in there. Okay, little puff of bleach stone escapes. And that will go down in here. And then once it's in there, let's say grab something that has some germs on it, like this cooked fish. You got germs on you? Yes, you do. You have 340 germs, and now you don't have... Well, all the germs start to rapidly die off because the whole thing is now in bleachstone. Or in... Mm, chlorine. All right, with that done, we will just wait the... How long has Pawn got left before they can... Uh, food poisoning wear off? 98 seconds. Okay, once Pawn's good, we'll wait until morning and send them on their way. It's a brand new day. Pawn is just up, and so is done and dusted in case we need to send them immediately afterwards. And we are going to send Pawn in. All right, Pawn, do your thing. Let's see what's on the other side. Okay, knock, knock, open wide. Okay, and... Ready to transmit passenger teleport? Okay, so they just sit in there until you hit the button? Oh, I should have sent them with an oxygen mask. Oh, uh, never mind, too late. 
Oh, look, little male. Okay. Okay, there's oxygen. There's oxygen. They're not dying. Uh, water. That's good. We've got oxalites, so we're not going to die immediately. Food. Oh, actually, I never even thought about food. All right, we've got 17 kilos of nutrient bar, so 17 days worth of food. Oh, yeah, we'll have to go food immediately as well. And a teleporter transmitter. We can go straight back. Okay, and a cryo tank? Oh, we can preserve them. So, if anything goes wrong, I suppose we can stick someone in there until we send in some reinforcements, maybe? And, no, there's a defrost friend button. Tank appears impossibly old, but smell crisp and brand new. Shilo a silhouette is just barely visible through the frost. No, I don't want to defrost someone just yet. God knows what's in there. Hmm. Oh, we've got mealwood. And we've got bristle blossom. And we've got buried muckroot. And, oh, we've got oil. Oh, yes. Okay, so... Uh, how do we rotate between planets? I think... Yeah, so this is the one we're on. We're on this one, which is oily core. Let's go back here, oversee planetoid. And it works. Oh. That's charging. Recharging 0.3%. Okay, that's got to charge up again, so we can't send any reinforcements to help them out. They're stuck. So they're stuck there until... Well, no. They can come back. Oh, I get it. You can send one, but you can't send two at a time. So you can't just say, rotate someone in, do a few things, rotate them out, and then rotate them back in again five seconds later. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Well, thinking about this, there's some good news and bad news. Good news is this is a normal standard sandstorm biome. There's plenty of coals that we can tap into for power. Uh, we can build a treadmill if we need to. We can start growing mealwood, which is rapid is a rapid growth crop. It takes three cycles, so we can definitely get food very quickly as well. We've got algae, which we can immediately turn into oxygen, so we're not going to run out of oxygen either. In fact, this whole place is a perfect startup. There is no worries at all about running this place. Downsides. Now, the downsides is something I didn't consider, which is, um, yeah, this pawn here, they have some morale requirements, as in they have a six-point morale requirement because of uh, the way they've been configured. If we check out their skills here, you'll notice up here they've got hard digging, super hard digging, uh, super hard digging, and super duper hard digging. So this is giving them a little bit of a morale requirement of six. Now, we have to get them six morale points for their next cycle, or they're going to start stressing out, or we'll have to send them home. Maybe we should have sent someone who didn't have any skill points assigned, or maybe skill scrub them before we put them through the gate. Yeah, that would have been better. Skill scrub them before you put them through the gate, then you can use them on the other side for whatever you need, and if you need to use one point or two, you can judiciously in whatever skills you need. That would have been a smarter plan. Live and you learn, live and you learn. Right, but I'm going to have to cut that out there, but I'd like to just go over... Well, a couple of things here that I think is really nice that they did about this, as opposed to the way the game used to previously work. This map here does not have everything you need. Oh, by the way, I've done a, an enormous sweep command. I, I want these dupes to be doing something while we're working on the other planet. This planet doesn't have everything you need, so you basically have to, and from what I've heard, you get a cool slush, cool slush salt water, and you get a cool slush polluted water geyser. So these two are standard, you get them on every map. So every starter map will have just these resources available and will be exactly like this. There's no randomization. This means when you start, you can learn how to play it. You can keep replaying this map again and again until you get it right. The problem with the previous version of the game, or the... Oh, not the problem. Well, one of the stumbling points for newer players was they get thrown onto a map and they have literally everything thrown at them on the first map. You've got to deal with uh, natural gas, you've got to deal with chlorine, hydrogen. You, you've got to deal with all the different geyser types, all the different volcano types, all of that stuff. Here, you get two cold geysers, salt water, polluted water. You have to learn how to sieve them, use them, turn them into crops. And you've only got two crop types to deal with and only one creature type to deal with. That's it. It's just simple, easy. And once you've mastered this, you don't even have to go into here for ages. You can survive here for an enormous amount of time. Let's look at our sulfur supply. We have 95 tons of sulfur and I don't think I've mined it all out yet. We could run this for ages. Oh, and as a side experiment, I'm going to feed these uh, grub grubs. They take 20 kilos of... They consume 20 kilos or 50 kilos of sulfur a cycle. Now, for 150 kilos of sulfur, I'm assuming that they will increase the amount of grub rubs they give out, which means all of these bug buckets should get groomed. I'll check it out. I'll, I want to do some math on it to see if it's actually worthwhile. But no, back to the overview. So you sort of stay on this. You'll end up stuck in this planet oil for a while until you master most of the basics. You won't have to worry about heat too much because you can just rotate heat from these. You can cool your base because you're definitely going to have cool slush geysers. Before, all the geysers and vents were randomized, so you couldn't depend on those things. 
this is a good way to do it. This will be nice for newer players, I think. It'll make it much easier for them to get into the game. For the older players who've been around for a while, this is going to seem like easy mode, but, well, I suppose it is. My guess, from what I've seen so far, is this planet will be the only one we'll be able to access via teleporters. Maybe we can build these later or something like that. And then after, and then from there, we'll have to use the oil off here. This planet, I assume, will contain all the oil we need to get into space. We'll be able to make the plastic out of this. Uh, we'll also get a bunch of fossil. We're also going to get diamond. And I'm assuming there is the... Ah, uh, where is it? Back here, there is these little devices. This is the warp pipe output, and we've got a warp pipe input over here. And if you check them, they have three out... Well, this one has three outputs on it. We've got your gas output, we've got your liquid output, and then we've got your conveyor rail output. So gas, liquids, and solids, basically. And I am of the opinion that this is not for same planet stuff. This is for... There's going to be some more over here and we can link these ones here to the ones on the other side and we'll be able to send through oil, we'll be able to send through diamond, we'll be able to send through all the natural resources from here. We basically will strip mine this map out and ship it back to our starter planet. Or maybe we'll move here, I don't know, it depends on how big this asteroid is and... Ooh, ethanol! Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind, never mind. Yeah, I'm way over budget here, but I do like the way they've done this. That means there's going to be really difficult planets out there, like volcanic planets that you're going to have to land on with a rocket and try and build up. Oh, never mind, never mind. Anyway, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.